How's it going, Owls? Welcome to Decoding, your first podcast that will truly take news, information, and knowledge to another level. Today, we're going to analyze the comparison between Masquerade.dieb and Microsoft's official sources, focusing on technical security, file integrity, legality, and even digital ethics. Hello, Victor. How's it going, Owls? Yes, it's a fascinating and highly relevant topic nowadays, especially considering the implications of activating software through alternative methods versus official ones. Exactly. That's right, Sol. And the first thing that stands out is the issue of technical security. Microsoft distributes its ISOs from its own servers using HTTPS and digital signatures, which ensures that the file you get is the same as the one originally created, without modifications or malicious code. Correct. That integrity is key. Downloading directly from Microsoft virtually eliminates the risk of malware or accidental or intentional alterations, which is essential for keeping a system secure. Yes, Sol. And well, on the other hand, we have Masquerade.deb, which not only offers original ISOs and, well, in many cases, but also activation tools, like this script that runs in PowerShell and requires elevated administrative privileges to work, which introduces certain risks. Yes, and that execution method, using invoke rest method to download and then piping it to invoke expression, can be dangerous if you're downloading from a compromised source, don't you think? Exactly. The technique is interesting because even though the code is open source and reviewed by the community, verification still depends on the user. Many people have to manually check the hashes to make sure that, well, the file hasn't been tampered with. Although the power of open source is an advantage, it also means that only experts will be able to read and validate every line, leaving less technical users with a potential risk that could go unnoticed if that verification isn't done. That's right. Also, in the case of ISOs, while Microsoft provides files with official checksums so users can confirm their authenticity, on Masquerade.deb, it's assumed that they are one-to-one -one copies of the originals, but the trust ultimately lies with whoever downloads them. And here, an important challenge arises. Is it really reliable for the average user to verify those hashes? Convenience may win out, but technically, integrity is only guaranteed through manual comparison. That's right, Sol. And that's the point. It's crucial. While the official process is automatic and secure, using Masquerade involves running a script with administrative privileges, which, if the download URL were to be spoofed, could lead to the execution of malicious code. Yes, the possibility of forging the script or modifying the URL exists, especially considering that there have been cases where malicious actors tried to distribute altered versions to insert Trojans. Now moving on to the legal aspect, downloading ISOs from Microsoft is not illegal. In fact, it is allowed for reinstalls or testing, but activating the software without a license using activators like that violates the EULA and is technically considered piracy. Exactly. Although in practice Windows and Office may work, fraudulent activation breaks the license agreement, which in business or professional environments can lead to severe legal penalties. That's right. And beyond the legal aspect, this is also an ethical issue. Using unlicensed software means benefiting from a product that others pay for, which, from the perspective of responsible digital ethics, is not right. Very true. In the end, it's a dilemma between convenience and responsibility. Some argue that if the cost is prohibitive, using these tools is justified, but that really penalizes those who maintain development and support. Exactly. And in the case of Masquerade.deb, although many technicians claim that the script is safer thanks to its open source code and community auditing, only the most experienced can be completely sure. And for the average user, this is an unnecessary risk. I might disagree a little here. Some say that in laboratory environments or controlled tests, using alternative methods can be justifiable as long as the legal exposure is understood and the necessary precautions are taken. That's true, but we should clarify that, don't you think, Sul? In production environments or a professional context, security and integrity are essential. Using unofficial methods compromises not only the stability of the system, but also the administrator's reputation. Exactly, and it's worth highlighting the practical aspect. Official downloads, even if they sometimes require additional tools like the media creation tool, ensure that the system remains genuine and continues to receive support. That's right. On the other hand, 
Maskread.deb offers attractive speed and convenience, allowing you to choose languages, versions, and obtain an ISO directly, which is an advantage for advanced users, but always at the cost of taking on certain risks. And that's the dilemma, convenience versus security and legality. Many users may be tempted by the ease offered by alternative methods, but without realizing that they're taking risks with critical updates and official support. That's right. And furthermore, using unofficial activators leaves the system marked as non-genuine, which, while it may not affect immediate functionality, compromises the integrity of the software in the long run. Yes, and let's remember that even though Microsoft generally doesn't take legal action against individual users, in corporate environments the risks are much higher and can include audits and financial penalties. Exactly. So, the final recommendation is clear, my friends. For the average user, the best option is to download ISOs from Microsoft's official channels, always verifying the integrity of the files in a simple and secure way. That is the wisest approach. On the other hand, if an advanced user decides to resort to alternative methods because they need versions that are no longer publicly available, they must do so with extreme caution, verifying every step and being aware that they are operating in a legal and ethical grey area. Exactly. You have to understand one thing, my friends. Open source transparency does not completely eliminate risks and the final responsibility lies with the user. Security, integrity and legal compliance are factors that should not be overlooked. And ultimately, it all comes down to a balance. The convenience of obtaining old or specific versions through alternative methods versus the absolute reliability, legality and security offered by Microsoft's official sources. Precisely, each method has its pros and cons and the choice depends on individual needs and the level of technical knowledge one has to manage the associated risks. That's right. And furthermore, this discussion reminds us that in the tech world, security and legality must be priorities, since shortcuts can end up costing more in the long run in terms of vulnerabilities and legal issues. Exactly. Exactly, exactly. And as a final thought, it's essential for users to be critical and well-informed before choosing a path. While tools like Mad Grape have their place in certain contexts, using them indiscriminately without proper verification and caution can put both the system and the user's legal integrity at risk. That's how it is. The official Microsoft route is the safest and most ethical option for most people, while alternative options require careful consideration of risks and responsibilities. This has been a very enriching conversation and definitely a topic that invites reflection. I totally agree, Sol. Technology is advancing quickly, and with it, the need to make informed decisions is becoming increasingly critical. Thank you for joining us in this first podcast called Decoding for being with us in such a detailed analysis. A big hug, and remember, stay tuned to stay well informed. Thank you. It has been a pleasure to discuss these important points. See you next time to keep exploring these technological dilemmas. Greetings to our entire community. We sincerely want to thank everyone who is following and supporting us. You may have already noticed that we are incorporating artificial intelligence technologies into our projects. Recently, thanks to a question from one of our followers and members of the WhatsApp group, we have created a guide agent that is allowing us to develop a podcast episode in test mode. We would love to share it with you and receive your feedback. If you spot any errors or have suggestions for improvement, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments. Your feedback is essential for us to keep improving in this community. See you soon. Your friend, Victor Sanchez.